In this video, we're going to learn how to backfill when adding materialized views to existing tables. So I've got a ClickHouse server running and this is my client. And I'm just gonna show you that we've got just the one table there, Wiki. And we'll just have a look at the creation of that table. So you can see we've got just the single column JSON and then we're specifying meta.dt specifically as the date time and then the, the data is ordered by that field. Let's have a look at some of the records in the table. So you can see we've got data from the wiki recent changes feed being loaded in here and it is being loaded in continuously from a script that I've got running in the background. Now let's imagine that I wanna write a query that counts how many changes were done by user. So we could write this query and you can see it comes back and perhaps unsurprisingly, all the accounts at the top are bots. Now let's say we wanna quickly work out the number of changes per user when working with billions of records. In that case, we might decide, actually, I'm gonna have a table called wiki users per hour. I'm gonna have the hour, I'm gonna have my user, and then I'm gonna count how many times does that user post in the hour. We'll be using a summing merge tree engine, and then we'll order the data by user and hour. And so what this means when you're using the summing merge tree engine is that when parts are merged in the background, it's gonna look at that sorting key, so user and hour, and it's gonna to merge together any rows where it sees the combination of that user and hour, and then it will sum any numeric value, so it'll be summing the counts, so that we'll eventually end up with, for each hour and each user, just one row for that combination, and then the count of how many changes they made. Next, we need to create a materialized view to populate this table. We're gonna use an incremental materialized views so that the table's always up to date. Now remember that incremental materialized views are effectively bits of SQL triggered by inserts. So they won't pick up any data that's already been ingested. So data is still being ingested into our wiki table. And so we need to keep that in mind when creating the materialized view that's gonna populate the wiki users per hour table. And so how we can do this is imagine we've got this timeline here. So this is time going from left to right. And we'll have a little line in the middle, so that's now. And so what we wanna do is we wanna create ourselves just a few minutes in the future, a little materialized view filter time, and then everything to the right is gonna be where we wanna filter on and get that's gonna be coming into our materialized view. And then everything on the left going backwards, that's gonna be the data that we need to backfill. So we just wanna give ourselves a little bit of time so that by the time we've got all our materialized view ready, we haven't gone past that time. So what we'll do now is we've got to work out well, what time are we up to at the moment. So we'll write a query to do that and count how many records you've got. You see we haven't got very many records and then the time is 13, 16, 28. So what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a, a cutoff, just a little bit of time into the future. We'll just do a couple of minutes. Um, so we'll set that to 118. And then we're gonna create ourselves a materialized view that's gonna populate the wiki users per hour table. And then notice we're computing the, the hour that the post was made the user, and then we've got the count, and then under the, we've got a special where clause in there that's checking for the date to be greater than the cutoff. So this materialized view is only gonna uh, import stuff that happened in the future. We can then have a look at the creation of our materialized view afterwards, and I just wanted to do this so you can see that the parameter that we've used has actually been inlined, so it's got that 1318 date. Let's now write a query to count for each user, how many posts have they done, and we're gonna do it directly from the wiki's table, and then we're gonna do it using the wiki users per hour table. And you can see at the moment, the wiki users per hour count is zero everywhere. If we run the query again after a few seconds, we can see it's now started processing records. And let's run it one more time just for fun. The numbers aren't the same now, though, and that's because we're missing the backfill. This query here is a simple way to do the backfill. So kind of writing it directly into our target table. And this will work pretty well. And you notice on the where clause, the difference there from the materialized views, we've changed it so that it's now less than the cutoff. So remember, it's going back to the left-hand side of that diagram. We won't run this, uh, but we could do, and it would work because the data is quite small. But when we're working with bigger data, we don't really want to do it like this because it's going to basically create an in-memory block of all the records in that query. Instead, we're going to create ourselves a temporary backfill table and associated materialized view to get the old data into our wiki users per hour table. So we're gonna create a table uh, called wiki backfill with the date and the user, and we're gonna use the engine null. And this is effectively the dev null of table engines. So the data just gets pretty much thrown away, but materialized views will still run against the ingested data. Now, when you're creating backfill tables, we could have created one with the JSON type with all the fields in there, but since we know that we only need the date time and the user to populate our new table, we might as well just have just those values. We can then create ourselves a backfill materialized view. It's just quite similar to the one that we saw before, but 
instead of querying wiki, we're going to query wiki backfill. And again, the cutoff needs to be earlier than the date. And then to get that to actually run, we can do insert into wiki backfill and we'll query everything from our wiki table. We can then rerun our count query. And now we see the same values in the two count columns. And let's do it one more time just to show that data is still being ingested and you can see that numbers are still equal, but they're now bigger. For more on materialized views, you'll want to check out this video next.